All right, good morning, everyone. Welcome to So You Want a PG Day in your city. Hetty and I have both been uh, chairs or co-chairs of an event like this, so we wanted to share some of our learnings. Uh, you'll notice as we go through the slides that um, our examples are U.S. examples because we gave U.S. PG days. But I suspect that many of the uh, policies will be similar. And what else? There was another thing I wanted to tell you, but that's okay. Yeah. So, uh, you um, want to tell about your uh, like design. That's what you want oh, to tell. Oh yes, thank you. I was going to do that right here. So, um, the. The talk, our talk is in two sections. The first section is focused on a little bit of why do PG days, as well as like the key big things that you need to do to get them done. We're, we're gonna aim to go through that pretty quickly and then move on to lessons that we learned while we were doing our very first one in hopes that those lessons would help any of you who might want to do a PG day in the future. So my name's Teresa Jackmini and I was co-chair of PG Day San Francisco in 2020. We haven't had another one since, but hopefully we will come back to that. I um, happen to have, I think I might be one of the few people here who was involved in the world of Postgres before there was a Postgres. I worked at um, Ingress and before that relational technology and um, have been sort of in and around Postgres for the whole time working at various and sundry companies. And at Microsoft, I do event-related stuff. I'm sure you've seen me in the Microsoft booth almost 100% of the time, as well as publish the newsletter. I love gardening, and I have chickens, and, uh, <laughs> and that you will see uh, throughout, you might notice throughout a lot of gardening references, and that's because Hetty and I believe that PG Days, gardens need nurturing and love and care, and the Postgres community needs love and care and nurturing, and um, PG days are one way to do that. All right, uh, so good late morning or early afternoon, if you are Midwestern like me, uh, it's lunchtime. Uh, so uh, my name is Hetty Dombrowska, and most of you know me because I run around here and I'm very loud, so it's difficult not to notice me. Uh, so um, I, uh, so fun facts about me, I compiled it for like one of the conferences, I think it's good. So this picture actually, turned out uh, pops up when you Google me, and uh, maybe for a reason, because it's my second uh, favorite place, uh, Helsinki, and I am there with my two favorite things, ice cream and coffee, uh, so like, uh, goes, uh, like, you know, goes hand in hand. Um, I work with databases for over 40 years, so most time I think people do not live that long, but trust me, there were databases 40 plus years ago, and I worked with everything imaginable and not imaginable through this time. Um, the other thing is I uh, love working with application developers. You might doubt it if you heard the panel yesterday, but I actually love this work, though it's challenging most of the time, but I do love it. Um, also, I'm a local organizer of Chicago PostgreSQL user group, one of the oldest and most established groups in the U.S., and at some point, at least, it was second largest user group in Western Hemisphere. Um, shameless bragging. Um, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so also I'm an author of the uh, uh, PostgreSQL query optimization uh, book, and second edition is about to be released in, like, late uh, January, early February. Uh, and last thing about me is, uh, like, I do not believe in work-life balance. It's called work-life integration, and that's, like, what I'm trying to follow. So, now to the point. Uh, why PG days? So, why you, so you want PG day? Why you want PG day in your city? So, here is why. Uh, yeah, <clears throat> Postgres community likes to talk. So, it's not only me, it's in general. People in Postgres community love talking. I think uh, our community was the most miserable during pandemic because we did not have conferences and we could not talk. And PG conferences are very different from academic conferences because for academic conference, what you need? You need a publication, okay, to do your PhD, to, to like, uh, 
you know, approve that you are still worth holding your like professorship position. So, um, and then they do not really care how they present their work in like 15 minutes, like 80 slot. It's very different in Postgres because what we present is what we are doing, what we work and so on. Um, so, uh, yes, there is Postgres documentation. As many people pointed out through this conference, Postgres documentation has it all, but, but you need to know what you are looking for when you start looking at documentation. If you have no idea what exactly you need, uh, finding what you need might be challenging. So again, you need to talk to people to find what you want. You might not know what you want before you talk to somebody. Uh, but good part about Postgres community, you can ask anybody about anything and like everybody can like stop and tell you and tell you and tell you and uh, like Postgres community love sharing knowledge. So Postgres conferences is um, like networking, knowledge sharing, establishing connections. Okay, is it still me? Or is it you? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, oh yeah, it's still me. Okay. So now, uh, other thing of PGD, there are local conferences. So why local is important? Because uh, you know we all know that um, all of us have these restrictions, uh, like saving uh, travel budget. So travel budget is shrinking, and it may be more challenging to convince your manager that you need to go somewhere to talk to people, right? Because it's like airfare, hotel, and uh, etc. So when it's local conference, the only thing your manager need to prove is you are not at work Monday, and uh, high chances that they are okay with that. Um, on the other hand. Yes, we have uh, user groups and stuff, but also you want to attract speakers from different parts of the world, right? So uh, at least different parts of the country, but ideally from different parts of the world. And then, okay, come to my city because it's like super cool city and maybe you haven't been there and just come. And uh, that is also kind of good attraction for speakers. Yes, I learned. Uh, so PG Day that combines this both, like easier access for local people and more potential attraction to the out of town speakers. Still you. All right, uh, okay, still me, all right? Okay, so now we mentioned uh, Postgres user groups. Postgres user groups are absolutely essential for the PG days because uh, it's your audience, uh, it's you, uh, people who will come to your PG day, your first. Uh, attendees, also that's a base for your volunteers because as I will point during this talk, there is no such a thing as too many volunteers. So that is basically your, uh, like this source, like the soil for your like, future picture. Very good, very good. Yeah, uh, yeah, okay. Uh, uh, so, yes, just, yeah, you, you need to think. Okay, so what does it take to get started? The first thing that you're going to do need, especially in the US, is an advocate from the um, PGUS organization. Yeah. Yes. And that advocate will then help you to get your talk, uh, your, your talk, your uh, <laughs> event approved, right? And, and move forward. So that's really important, but maybe you don't know anybody on the, on the Postgres Association in your area, and how are you gonna find that out? Well, come to a conference, yeah. talk to people. Um, a lot of the people in the red shirts, not all of them, but a lot of the people of the red shirts here are part of Postgres, US, uh, of Postgres Europe. So introduce yourself, talk to them, uh, tell them you wanna do a PG day, right? Get, get uh, connected with them so that they can then advocate for mm -hmm. your event with the rest of the board. Yes. All and right, and then, okay, so that's me actually. Okay, yeah. that's fine, okay. So when you found somebody who can talk for you, and honestly, it took me a while to get this, like, who can talk for me. But when I got somebody, then, then you need money, 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 money. And then you need people, people, and more people. And you need non-existent time. Yep. Right. Okay, no. so what does it take to make a, PG Day happen. I'm gonna click through these really quick because our, our meet is in our lessons, but I, we did want to include a list of all the different things so that if you come back to look at it, you'd have a resource. The first thing you're gonna need is an organization committee, right? You need the people that are gonna put it on. And actually, probably even before you need that uh, org committee, you might need a preliminary date because you'll need to Ask the people that yes. you're 
going to ask to work with you if they're available yes, at a time. You ask people and they said when, but first yeah. thing, like, yep. I'm not sure. Tell me when you are sure. Yep, exactly. And then create a budget. Get that budget approved. This is an area where often it takes some time back and forth with the Postgres Association that you're working with. So even though you think you have the best budget all time, you've covered everything, it might take you a little bit of time to get that approved. You need a website, you need a CFP and a CFP committee to review your proposals that are submitted. You need to finalize your venue, and in finalizing your venue, you also finalize your dates. You, you'll often find that there is some jig and jag, but you know, back and forth between those, because in order to get that uh, final date, you need to have your venue, and the venue might not be available, and you have to go back and forth. And this is probably these next two things. You've done all of this work, and now you have to promote, and you all know that if you don't promote, nobody's going to come, yeah, yeah. right? No promote, one's going to be there. And promote and promote. Oh, yeah. That's what we're doing here, promoting, promoting, promoting. You heard me Pretty promoting. Soon. Yeah. You have to yeah. wait till the end. <laughs> Uh, and lastly, uh, you need to find your sponsors. And then you can start working. You've done all this stuff, and now you can really start working and executing on the event. So, are you the right person? Uh, we wanted this talk to focus not only on that person like Hetty who wanted it forever and ever, right? And she made it happen. We wanted the talk to appeal also to people who maybe only have four or five hours to contribute. Mm -hmm. So, are you the right person? Well, if you want to do this, you're the right person. You're the right person to start. You might need to hunt around for other people to work with you. You might not, you might know, know in your heart of hearts that you're not the person to lead the charge, but you can certainly start, right? You can start talking to other people. If you want it, what is it? If you build it, they will come, right? So that sort of thing. So this is different ways, and, and this is the thing to trying to appeal to all different kinds of people. There are a lot of different ways that you can, there are a lot of buckets, right? <laughs> uh, using our gardening analogy, there's lots of different buckets of things that can be done and work that goes into putting on a PG day. From design work, where someone you know, they don't really care about sh even showing up at the PG Day, but they'll make you a really beautiful logo, mm -hmm. um, nice banners for your website, if you do t-shirts, all that kind of thing. Uh, there might be someone who's a budget person who's really a good money cruncher. And so there's so many different ways. I'm not gonna go through all of these, they're here in the slides, but do know that if you wanna be involved in a PG Day, there will be something for you to do. And then when you get to the day before and the day of the PG Day, there's even more stuff that is available for you to do. You can help set the site up. You could uh, run around doing those last minute errands, um, buying a dongle that uh, you forgot to bring from home. <laughs> you know, your speaker forgot to bring it home. There's so many things that day before that, that need to be done. And then on the day of, this is where Hetty will talk even more you need a lot of volunteers to be your room monitor, to keep time, to give people directions of where to go in your venue, um, help with registration, all that kind of stuff. So there are so many ways that you can help. Right. Uh, and if you don't know where to start, well, you're already started because you're here listening to this talk. You've already started, but you could also reach out to other PG Day organizers. Stacy and I did the PG Day San Francisco together. Uh, Vic is here. Hetty is here. Lots of uh, Magnus and, and folk are here. Andreas is here, right? There's so many people that you can talk to about how they did it, what worked for them, what didn't work for them, hot tips. You can also, um, Stacy and Mark Wong gave a talk at PGCon in Ottawa in um, earlier this year on running a community conference. And there's a video of that available. And that's a really great resource for knowing the more detailed what's versus the lessons, right? We'll cover some of the what's and the lessons as well. And now, we're on to the lessons. So Hetty and I, right, when we started preparing for this talk, we had a document and we just threw in 
lesson growing, after lesson growing, after lesson growing, after lesson. Growing, growing, growing. And, and uh, it was, and then, yeah, it was that, a big that mess. Was that was MongoDB. And then we decided we should make a Postgres out of this manga and like categorize it. <laughs> exactly, exactly right. And so we came up with these three categories, planning, people, and execution. And that's sort of where most of our, our lessons that we learned fell. All right. So, uh, yeah. Now it's picked. Yeah. Playing lesson. By the way, Teresa, we're already at least five minutes behind our rehearsing, so we'll need okay. to speed up. All right. Okay. Because um, I am also watching. Okay, so um, choosing a date can be tricky. And that's the earliest thing you need, because honestly, you ask people that, I think, what is your date? Then I can tell whether I can or can't anything. So that's tricky, and you need to take lots of things into consideration, especially in the US, where we do not have long vacations, so people are using long weekends to attach day before, day after, so avoid long weekends, because people might not be available. I will, uh, I would, uh, the midweek uh, is the best, sometimes Fridays are okay, uh, PG Day Chicago will be on Friday, but Mondays are now. Uh, okay, uh, so consider religious holidays of all religions you even never heard about, please. But, uh, consider other events in your city, in Postgres world, uh, like example, so uh, everybody knows about PG Day Paris this year, like how did it happen? Because uh, they did not know that there will be another event in uh, Pasadena, so now I am not going to PG Day Paris, okay? But, uh, like, but they were trying to avoid other conflict. So I do not know what they would do if they know they are between two conflicts, but uh, very important to know everything was happening. And um, for uh, PGConf New York, so everybody probably remember when it accidentally uh, got on the UN uh, week, so we do not want it anymore, right? Because you know what happened, then all hotel prices were like twice yep. more. Uh, so, uh, we go back. Yeah. okay. Uh, I think that's no, it. That's still yeah. You know, that's, that's you. Yeah. Okay. So, um, you all know, I'm sure, that setting goals drives behavior. And so, one of the things that is really important to do early on is for your team to come together and figure out what are your going, primary goals going to be. If you are focused on having the best in-person event that you can possibly have, then your venue and your catering and things and the number of people that you can attract, that's gonna be, everything you do is gonna be focused on that. But if what you want is sort of that long tail that videos provide, then you're gonna wanna make sure that you're investing in videos and making sure that your captions are really good and all that kind of stuff. So just one of the things we learned was figure out what your goals are for the event and then drive toward that. The third lesson that we learned was, not surprisingly, it <laughs> takes money, right? And there's only two places that the money comes from, sponsorships and tickets. But there are so many different ways that you can end up spending the money. And a big learning for me was, for example, when, I, when we were talking to the caterers, some of the caterers included the linens, the... Um, plates, silverware, and cups as part of the price of the food. And other caterers didn't, right? And so after a while, I ended up creating a list when we were looking at venues or caterers of all of the different elements to think about because there were so many. I, we won't go through all those, but there's a lot of different ways. So try and get as many details up front when you're creating your budget so you aren't surprised yeah. later. Or use Convin, which has it all. All that. That's that strongly right. recommended. Yeah. <laughs> and um, secondly, um, be just you need to be conscious when you're thinking of your budget of working within the policies of the association that you're working with and know that the Postgres associations are cautious. If they're underwriting your event, they don't want you putting a big line item in for a speaker dinner when you haven't even sold enough tickets to cover the venue. And the fourth lesson we learned is that your event structure influences your cost. This is probably fairly obvious to all of you, but um, for example, if you're gonna do two days, it's gonna cost more than if you're gonna do one day. And if you're gonna have two tracks, it will cost more than if you're gonna do one track. 
What might not be as obvious is if you are going to do lots and lots of short talks and you're going to record those talks. Um, more talks in the same amount of time will cost more to produce, produce quality videos later on, right? So those are the th things, um, whether or not you're doing attendee bags, that's an expense, those kinds of things. So just think about that when you're coming up with a structure for your event. Yeah, uh, getting sponsorship first year, I just did first year, is hard, very hard. And it's hard anyway. Getting sponsors is one of the most difficult things. Uh, because So what we need to do, we need to build prospectus. Uh, we can look at other events, but we also should be cautious because the event is more popular, less popular, new event sponsors are kind of like more cautious, should they invest, so you might kind of lower the prices also like I cannot build my prospectus comparing to New York or San Francisco because the, all the prices are very different so we also need to adjust and explain why we are adjusting and need to look at levels and sponsors benefits because we found a couple of times that we set the sponsorship price which basically did not even cover what we give them. So like all, all of these things need to be carefully evaluated. Uh, then you need to brainstorm ideas because you know we love all our usual suspects but you know how many events they can cover especially if we want more PG days. So you often need to go and find sponsors who did not do it before, did not think that they might benefit from being sponsors, and they need to explain them why they will benefit from it being sponsors. It might be specific, more specific to the city, for example. Yeah, yes. Things like Ab that. Ab absolutely, yes. Yep. Okay, next one. All right. Okay. Uh, yes, yep. that's me, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, okay, uh, <laughs> so, your venue matters. Um, and uh, really, uh, there are two ways how your venue matters for PG days. One, uh, local people, it should be easily accessible with public transportation and overall. If you think everybody is hybrid or the whole world is remote, it's not. People go to offices, like I go to office, and there are more people who go to office, uh, they kind of do not want to divert from their usual route. So when I'm planning in Chicago, I want to make sure it's like not far from two main railway stations because uh, that's like how people get to the city. Uh, on the other hand, uh, I, uh, like I'm cautious about our out of town speakers because it may be great event and it's kind of like, you know, in Chicago you can be five minutes in the wrong direction and you have completely different view out of the windows and I want my guests to see the best of Chicago. So that's something which I as a local person know and the rest of the committee might not know. Like why you do not like this? It's like same, it's like five minutes from green light. Like, nope, it's like the, the, uh, all of these things need to be taken into account. Uh, so yeah, amenities, yes. Uh, so if you find a venue like from scratch like Teresa did, yep. you need to check all of this like uh, accessibility, uh, like amenities, uh, Wi-Fi, etc. Again, use Convene if you have Convene in your city, like great. Uh, everything is like taken care of. Uh, the uh, like floor plans are very similar and uh, you like it really saves like lots of headache. Uh, so, uh, same with uh, all, all of the all of the other things, so <laughs> layout of uh, like uh, elevators, uh, like uh, accessibility stage. Uh, yeah, you need to check how many tracks you can accommodate. And by the way, multiple tracks may be not more expensive, but might be almost cheaper because then you can sell more tickets when you have more. Well, there tracks, you go. So. There you go. We had a single track. Uh, right. Our venue really only had one room. Right, that was something, and we had an elevator. We had an elevator, luckily, because you had to go upstairs. So those are the kinds of things that you want to think yeah. about. We had a very interesting and fun uh, venue. It probably didn't end up being the best venue because there were there were quirks, but um, it was a fun venue. Okay, catering options. So again, if you use um, Convene, it's handled. You don't have to worry about it. <laughs> But if you're using um, some other venue, they may have a list of vendors. They might say you can use your own. You can choose your own, and sometimes that will reduce the cost if you're doing that. But the big things that you need to know is can they serve uh, the food in the time that you have? If you have 100 attendees and then they can only serve 50 an hour, 
um, that would be a problem, right? <laughs> so you need to know that. And all of you know, after being at this event where we have, and, and New York City as well, where there's beverages there all day, we care about that, right? We all want our coffee or our tea um, right up uh, any time of day that we want. So you want to make sure that you do that. And then, of course, label all your dietary options, have vegetarian food, those kinds of things. Okay, people lessons. So one of the things that we learned with PG Day San Francisco was having clearly defined roles and responsibilities up front is really important. We didn't do that. We jumped in. We were so excited to be doing it that we jumped in. And we all started doing stuff together, and it was very exciting. Well, uh, we ended up having some conflicts because, for example, um, some of the folks on the operating team thought that we were responsible for how long the talks should be and how many talks we should do. And the folks on the talk selection That's team mm -hmm. thought they were responsible for how many talks there be yes. and how many there should be, yes. right? And, if we, and of course, that can land in either team or in, in best cases, it's a collaboration, mm -hmm. right? So it's really an important thing to do to, if you define them up front, if you don't have any assumptions, you can avoid some of that yes. conflict. Yes, so. and uh, ask Andreas if you're in doubt, because Andreas knows everything how things should be. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. All right, uh, okay. talk selection team. Um, all right, uh, yeah, diverse talk selection committee is uh, super uh, essential. So first of all, this is a requirement to be recognized as uh, the event. Uh, and um, also what I found important, I want to have uh, diverse tracks, like for example, I introduced the application developer tracks, and you want to make sure that you have people on the talk selection committee who actually can select the talks on this specific topic. Mm, uh, the other thing is like, uh, a real commitment is important, and for some people I learned the hard way, so for some people already say, I will never invite them to talk selection committee, and uh, for some people, like, can you please do it again? Because uh, it's like uh, kind of so, sort of short in time, but it's like very intense, and people need to understand the importance of being there and uh, do this in time. Uh, okay, and uh, yeah. Oh gosh, this is my favorite lesson. Not everyone have the same sense of urgency. <laughs> yeah, and so people who know they love, yes, uh, yes. Uh, so uh, yeah, think, uh, generally uh, things take longer than you think, and like way longer than you think. So for example, uh, some people are slow in responding emails, sometimes slow in general, sometimes it's like I only can respond in after hours most of the time. Um, so budget approval, uh, uh, might take way longer, way longer, and even longer than you expect. And before you approve a budget, you cannot do anything else. <laughs> you cannot tell even like privately, we are doing it on this day. So until budget is approved, like it does not exist. Uh, so uh, the site launch may take way longer than you can ever imagine. Unless uh, you have a web dev on your team, that really <laughs> helps. <laughs> yeah. Yes, uh, you, you space, uh, oh gosh, if, so we're already showing that we're super behind, so maybe we'll have time to talk about your space. So, all right, let's go. This is my favorite picture in the whole thing, yeah. this silly little kitten. So I don't know if this is an internationally, uh, an international term, but there are a lot of ways to skin the cat. And the, the long and the short of the, it is, you get your volunteers together, you figure out what the volunteers uh, strengths and weaknesses are, and you recruit people to fill the gaps. So you might have people that really like driving, right? And you might have people who can only give you two hours, and you, they just want you to tell them exactly what to do. So um, again, the, and then keeping in mind all the community policies of balancing your org, org team and your CFP team, things like that. So. And this is just to show that we had different structures. So in San Francisco, we had, had co-chairs. We didn't have one single chair. We had co-chairs. And we had a chair of the talk selection team. We did have a web dev on our team, which was really beneficial. Uh, we had access to design resources. And um, we had a sponsor team, code of conduct team. And for some of the things, it doesn't mean that you have individual people for each one of those. You might not have that many volunteers, but you structure the work in a way that, in that way. 
Patty, I think, on the other yeah, hand, no, she uh, did. So, uh, like, like, I'm not saying I'm like the only <laughs> responsible person. Actually, I received ginormous help from the first PG Day Chicago from PGS because I was the only local person on the committee. Uh, but we did not have enough people to have a structure, okay? So, like, it was literally everybody was doing, uh, like, uh, ev everything. And, yeah, I was, like, running around <laughs> as usual yeah. because patience is not my virtue, as everybody knows. <laughs> and, uh, like, uh, so... Uh, yeah. th this year I have like some uh, local uh, people, but again, uh, like uh, maybe it's my like uh, my failure as a leader of this project because I still like uh, uh, kind of like cannot live for some time and <laughs> yeah. uh, the things uh, unfortunately does not go smoothly independently. I'll be working on this, I promise. Yeah. Okay. And then if you if you take the time to watch the great talk that Stacy and Mark did, they go through a structure. Uh, of, and roles and responsibilities for each of those different teams. And you can see that there's several different teams, um, operations, grants, visa, sprints, all different kinds of things. Doesn't mean that your event will have all of those, but it's a really good resource to see how, um, with you know, yep. descriptions and things, yep. how folks would well, like I think to it should do. should be. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So volunteers, uh, you guys all know this, I'm sure. At least people have done any event with volunteers. They're a special, special kind of resource, right? Because they're not like employees or even coworkers. Um, they, you, they're doing it because they they want to do it and love to do it. And they might have different company cultures. I'm f I'm fortunate enough that um, the majority of my time that I spend on community events, I'm paid to do. Right, I work for Microsoft and I'm paying to do it, whereas other people like Hetty are working after hours to do any of their um, yeah. Postgres community yeah. work. Yeah. After and hours, before yeah. hours, in yeah. between hours, but yeah. like outside, <laughs> yeah. out, outside the working so, hours. <laughs> so the key thing is, is to be aware of that because that's going to affect um, your communication uh, and things like that. And then there's also... Um, different uh, organizational skills, right? Organization skills that people have. And so it's important, like if you can get a feel for that early, it's good because you'll know, oh, you know, this is a very design creative person and not necessarily the most organized person. So don't give them the spreadsheet job, right? Things like that. Okay. All right, yeah. Uh, there are never too many volunteers. I can repeat as many. There is never too many volunteers because you think you got, like, I thought, oh, I should not give as many free tickets. Like, no, as many as people want. Because what can happen, somebody gets sick a day before, including my daughter for first PGD. She was like volunteer number one, like, whew, out. Somebody might have family emergency. It's not necessarily COVID or something, but people get sick and have family emergencies. Somebody might plainly not show up. I had a number of people like this. Somebody might like turn up, be not so good at what they were assigned. And I like had to like swap people in the middle of the PG day. And then uh, who my substitute with? Uh, some people might like walk away from assignment. I also had this. So as many as you can, as and, many. As and many. I think the, the key thing, another thing about this, right, of course, having too many, you don't have enough work to do. You say, hey, get, go, to, go watch the talks. You're mm -hmm. good. Yeah. We're good, yes. right? But if you have a gap and you don't have enough, yes, it's really, like, really challenging. Yes, yes. So the next lesson, what is it? We're at 14. Okay, um, consensus is good, but it takes time and money often. So if you look on the right-hand side here, these were all different, a whole bunch of different ideas for the logo for PG Day San Francisco. And when I look back at it now, I like, I'm like, huh, any of those would have been great. They're all really great. And we ended up, uh, the one that ended up, we ended up using is the one on top. Uh, we spent a lot of time doing that and going back to the designer, back and forth, right? And we ended up with, with a good decision. But um, it does, it, and you probably get a better result if you go with consensus, not always. But, um, you know, consider whether it's worth it. There are lots of ways to communicate, and yes. Hetty's going to uh, cover yeah. that. Uh, so it's important to establish preferred way of communication, and we in the U.S. often do not know why you need something in addition to text messaging. Uh, so it comes as a surprise that, like, uh, again, Andreas comes and said, where is your Telegram channel? Like, what? 
what, what is Telegram? So now, now you know, I've been uh, out there for a while, but uh, you know, uh, especially when you have international teams, it's important to understand what will be the most efficient channel of communication. Because most important, you need to make sure people check it, people respond, and uh, like that's what makes it. So I just uh, introduced Teresa to Telegram at this yep. conference. Yep. Now, now I'm, I'm, I'm using Telegram, but I, there's also a lot of people who don't want to add another thing. So yeah. you do have to try to no. get to, to yeah. what yeah. to no, consensus I, I, around. I, I try to live without Telegram. No, yep. it's like it doesn't work. <laughs> All right, uh, all right, uh, go. Let's, okay, let's go. so there are a lot of different people to please uh, when you're doing this. This was another lesson that we learned. And sponsors, right, they want visibility and appreciation. Uh, speakers want uh, a nice place to prep for their talk, right? And a lot of people at their talk, right? There's a preference to have more attendees at their talk. Attendees want uh, good talks and good food. Uh, volunteers, appreciation. Uh, the Postgres Association, really, you, they want to be on budget. You don't, they, don't, they don't want you to, to mess with the budget. And then the companies that your volunteers are working for, they don't want you to sap out their people. They don't want you to suck too much time from their folks. So it's just something to be aware of that you need to manage all of these different things and have ways to, to keep all those people happy. It's a lot of people that keep happy. Okay, that was our section on people lessons, okay. and now we're moving into execution like lessons. Execution in five minutes, okay, by the way. We'll, yeah. we'll be okay. <laughs> so um, <laughs> the first thing is individual time. Anybody who's done a, a technical project knows, right? You have the resources, the number of hours of the people that are on your team. But there's also this concept of uh, elapsed time. Elapse time. time. You can't paralyze everything, parallelize everything, right? So if I, for me, it was like thinking of uh, a painting. We're having painting done in our house right now. And uh, it can't all be done in the day because you have to prep it. And then you have to wait for the first coat to dry. You can't just immediately put the second coat on. Yes. So the recommendation is about around a, a minimum of about six months. Minimum. It's it not can be minimum. done shorter. It's not as fun if you do it shorter. <laughs> it's a lot more um, stress on the team. Yes. Uh, yes. It helps to have a web designer on your team. And for the lack of time, uh, again, uh, like is, it helps, okay? If you don't have web designer, like, you run into like lots of problems uh, related with different people have different sense of urgency. Yep, <laughs> but you still do need that second set of eyes. You need someone double checking for the typos or the, the date that got, for, didn't get updated or whatever. Uh, so, yeah, okay. So promotion is more important than you think. That's why we're talking, yeah, PGD Chicago, PGD Chicago. It might be the most important thing. Also, these days, the social world is split, so some people do not do Twitter anymore. Some people do Mastodon. Some people will never do Mastodon to stay on Twitter. Some people hate Facebook and went out of, uh, away. Some people do not go on LinkedIn out of principle. So uh, it's important to make sure that you advertise on all possible uh, networks uh, to get uh, word out. Also, um, advertisement by like to your group, to your followers is also super important. Again, different people have different like, you know, trail of followers. So like as many different people, everybody advertise to their own network. Uh, it would be great. Uh, encourage speakers to promote your talks. And if you have a chance, uh, contact Floor and ask her to help you to promote. She <laughs> is like the best promoting engine in the world. Okay. okay. Uh, all right. So uh, for our next lesson, speakers need a place to stay. Now, Hetty and I didn't arrange things for our speakers, so we don't have personal recommendations or personal learning here. But uh, we have talked to a lot of other people about other events. And the key thing, a couple of key things is to have a list of recommended hotels at a minimum for your speakers, right? And to have those hotels be close to your venue, that's kind of a, a nice thing. Being right here in the same building is like so awesome. And if you can possibly, possibly do it, don't commit to a room block. So those are some quick things. 
Um, Teddy's got yeah, another uh, one. Yeah, so that's like one of uh, about your merchandise arrive late. So the problem which we had, uh, so Convin does not allow shipping uh, earlier than three day, uh, days before the event. And uh, people are shipping like from Australia. That's we had problem. Merchandise did not arrive. So when they plan three days before, who could possibly think that it can take six days within Chicago city limit to get from point A from, unless you live in Chicago, you will never think, but like, it's possible, and it's not for Christmas, it's actually slightly better for Christmas, like, but that's like typical situation. Uh, so, um, yeah. Now, yes, one more, be ready for big surprises. So like day of event, oh my gosh, everything can happen, as we said. So. Uh, Weather, uh, again, picture day Chicago, we had like uh, snow, we had uh, like rain, we had everything. So again, like flights cancellation, uh, like uh, public transportation halted. Mm, uh, no show volunteers, so, oh my gosh, big, big headache. So need to have go-to-go -go person. Uh, if possible, have staff easily identified as at this conference. Even if you do not do event t-shirts, make sure you have volunteer t-shirts and speakers yeah. t-shirts. Uh, and uh, again, as many volunteers as possible. Recruit, recruit. It's ne never, never too many. Yep. Okay. Right. So social events are fun, right? I, I really enjoy the speaker dinner, the social the other night, but they aren't required. And if your budget is tight, um, you need to think of like some other ways. So the trouble is, is that I, you know, we hear about the hallway track all the time and how important the hallway track is. And we all need time to socialize, to brainstorm together, to build community. So what do you do? You come up with a list of uh, nearby gathering places for folks so that they know that these are some hot, some good spots to gather. Consider the noise in those places. So you want pe people to be able to hear each other and things like that. And you can also consider having a sponsorship that is specific to your social event. It's a double-edged sword, though, because if you don't, if somebody grabs that sponsorship but doesn't grab your platinum or gold one, which is allowing you to put on the event, so you have to kind of be careful in, in how you do it. But really, it is um, nice to have, uh, have them, but take this into account as you're going through the event. Okay, this okay. is my favorite. Yes. yes. This is my favorite. So, um, showing gratitude. It's so important in a, com in a community, right? It is, um, and you want to be verbal, you want to be public about your gratitude. So, you can do that both uh, online, right, by the way that you, uh, on Twitter or however you promote folks. You can do it in person at the event, um, PG, you... EU does such a great job of putting sponsors up and things like that. Um, speaker gifts are so important. Uh, speakers spend a lot of time preparing their talk, uh, practicing their talk, coming to your venue. They spend a lot of time. They deserve a nice event uh, gift. This little pink guy. Um, it was, I have it. I have this one. It, yeah. it was uh, <laughs> the speaker gift for uh, Cytus Con that we did this last year. Yeah. I had uh, a friend of hand crocheted every single one of those. So they're meaningful. It's meaningful. And I think for me, like getting a handwritten note with a thank you is from, you know, with just with a signature from everybody on the team. It really shows a lot. And so I think, I don't know. Showing, showing gratitude is really, really important. Okay, last one, last one. Yes, so, uh, gosh, doing this is so gratifying. Like, I know that uh, it was, I wanted this event to happen for such a long time, so it was great to be a part of this, to actually have my wishes come true. Like, everybody be asking, so are you happy now? I am, I'm so happy that we did this. Uh, so it's, uh, like, it's super, 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 like, you know, great to put this event, people are, you know, saying everything went great, even if you think if everything was horrible, but you know, many people don't, I do not know what you're talking about behind the stage, we do not care, event was great, so like super gratifying. It's, it's an amazing, amazing feeling to yeah. put on a good event, to have um, more people than you expected to yes. show up, yes. right? Yes. To have sponsors that you didn't expect sponsor. Yes. I mean, it's really a fabulous, yeah. so if you even have a little inkling, I highly, highly recommend that you do it. Yes. Okay, that's yes. it. That's oh wait, it, so. I think there's one more thing. Yes, one more thing. 
Yes, so, yay! <laughs> Fiji de Chicago! Secret was so fun! And until February, so when you will be done with your holidays? Yes, okay? It's time to deep breath, new year resolution, submit, consider, sponsor. Yes. All right, all right, that's it. Thank you, everyone.